Со се ме па, па на гица му. There shall be a system of common schools to be open without charge to all classes of persons. Robert Smalls, U.S. Congressman, Republican, Army General, Delegate to the South Carolina Constitutional Convention Resolution at the Convention of 1868. Welcome to Things You Should Know, People Edition. Today we'll be talking about Robert Smalls, an ex-slave who not only escaped slavery, but became a sea captain and a politician. Born on April 5, 1839, as an enslaved African American to his white owner, Henry McKee, Robert spent an unusual childhood as a slave. Instead of working the fields or doing other labor, Robert would follow Mr. McKee around as he traveled. While Mr. McKee would conduct business in and around the town of Charleston, Robert would play with the other kids in the neighborhood, both black and white. It is said that this resulted in Robert not quite realizing what it was to be a slave. Robert's mother found this situation unacceptable. She did not want her child to misunderstand what a slave was, so she arranged for Robert to spend time with her family on the plantation she was from. On that plantation, Robert had to sleep with the other family members on the earthen floor, he wasn't allowed to play with the other children, and he was forced to pick cotton, rice, and tobacco from the fields. The normal clothes he wore were replaced by the tattered clothing the rest of the family wore. From this, Robert learned the lesson of slavery firsthand, and upon his return to his mother in Beaufort, she took him down to the central whipping post so he could learn how slaves were beaten and punished. After witnessing this, Robert developed a defiant streak, challenging even his owners when something happened he didn't believe was right. Over the course of the next few years, Robert began to challenge the local slave laws and the authority over them. This ended up with Robert spending time in the Beaufort County Jail on a regular basis. Because of this behavior, Robert's mother feared for his safety and convinced McKee to allow Robert to go to Charleston and be rented out for work. From the age of 12 on, Robert was hired to do many things. He became a lamplighter on Charleston streets, and he eventually found a love of his life, the sea. He discovered this as he worked on the docks and wharves of Charleston. While he was there, he worked as a stevedore, a rigger, a sailmaker, and eventually he became a wheelman. His duties were the same as a pilot, but his slave status meant he could not be called that. During this time, he learned a lot about the Charleston Harbor itself. At the age of 17, Robert met Hannah Jones, a hotel maid five years his senior, who had already had a child. They married on Christmas Eve, 1856. After their marriage, Robert had a child with Hannah named Elizabeth Lydia Smalls, who was born on February 1858, and then they had a son in 1861 named Robert Jr. Robert was assigned to steer the Confederate military transport CSS Planter in the fall of 1861. He served as the pilot for the ship. Several months later, on May 12, 1862, Robert saw his chance. The Planter's three white officers had spent the night on the shore trusting in Robert and the rest of the slave crew to maintain their place. Robert and seven of his eight crew members decided to steal the ship and make a run for the Union blockade outside the harbor. Robert secured uniforms and sailed the planter out of the southern wharf, stopping at one of the nearby wharves and picking up his family and the other families of the crew members. Robert was successful in getting to the Union ships, but not only did he steal the ship that had two cannons, it had an additional four pieces of valuable artillery with ammunition that were intended for a local Confederate fort. It also gave the Union an even more important present, a code book containing the Confederate secret signals and a map of mines and torpedoes that were planted around Charleston Harbor, along with Robert's own personal information about the harbor. Shortly after his escape, the Northern newspapers reported his actions and it resulted in Congress passing a bill that awarded Robert and his crew prize money for the ship they stole. Within two weeks after that, he met with President Lincoln to recount his adventure. His story became part of the argument to allow African Americans to serve in the Union Army. During this time, Robert served in the Navy until March 1863. While he was there, his son Robert Jr. had passed away at the age of two years old. In March, he was transferred to the Army and petitioned to allow African Americans to join the Army with him. In December of 1863, Robert became the first black captain of a vessel in the service of the United States. On December 1st, the planner had been caught in a crossfire between Union and Confederate forces. The ship's commander hid in a coal bunker and had decided to surrender. Smalls refused that order, fearing that the African-American crewmen would not be treated as prisoners of war and might summarily be killed. Taking command, Smalls piloted the ship out of the range of the Confederate guns, and for his bravery, he was made the captain of that ship. Smalls returned with the planter to Charleston Harbor on April 1865 for the ceremonial raising the flag upon Fort Sumter. After the war, Robert returned to his native home where he purchased McKee's house. His mother lived with him for the remainder of her life, and in addition, he allowed his former master's wife to move back in prior to her death as well. Smalls identified with the Republican Party because of the drive of the party to free the slaves. 
and during the Reconstruction, Robert was elected to the member of the South Carolina House of Representatives until 1870, and in the South Carolina Senate from 1871 to 1874. During this time, he was also briefly the commander of the South Carolina militia with the rank of Major General. In 1874, Robert was elected to the House of Representatives, where he served from 1875 to 1879. From 1882 to 1883, he represented South Carolina's 5th Congressional District in the House, and in addition, Robert was elected again to the 7th District and served from 1884 to 1887. He served in the 44th, 45th, and 47th through 49th U.S. Congresses. He's the last Republican to have been elected from the 5th District until 2010. He was the longest-serving African-American member of Congress until Adam Clayton Powell Jr. in the late 20th century. Robert was charged and convicted of taking a bribe five years earlier in connection with awarding of a printing contract. He was pardoned as part of an agreement at which charges were also dropped against Democrats who had been accused of election fraud. Smalls was active politically into the 20th century. He was a delegate to the 1895 Constitutional Convention. Smalls was appointed U.S. Collector of Customs in Beaufort, serving from 1889 to 1911, with only a short break in service. He died in Beaufort on February 22, 1915, in the same house behind which he'd been born as a slave, and he's buried behind a bust at the Tabernacle Baptist Church. So say me pa, pa, na, yitzavu.